on Score North and scorenorth.com. Kellen Mond's a really intriguing developmental prospect, somebody who is highly productive at Texas A&M, and they think he's got some transitional skill sets, including his mobility, that will really serve him well in this offense. But we're talking about a third-round draft pick here. They did not have an established backup on the roster. Maybe Mond does develop into the franchise quarterback at some point for Minnesota, but that is still a ways down the line. Our buddy, Tom Pelissero, our former colleague, good friend, sitting there in his spiffy suit. Always looking, always well dressed. Studio. But yeah, you and I know that that's just, just like a, us. That's just a room in his basement, and he's got a beer fridge about 10 feet away. He's not yep. fooling anybody. That's some Ari Gold level suits. And I, no I pants love. on, too. There's yeah. no way that he, oh, he's no. got pants Why on. Would you? I'm not wearing pants right now. No. No. Am I bluffing? I wouldn't be if I was home. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't stand up. <laughs> I may have done a vent line episode from home on Sunday without pants on before. That yeah. has happened. 100%. 100%. That's well, I mean, you, yeah. It's the pro move. I got no problem with that. Yeah. It's the pro not move. like I have to see it. Yeah. Boys, uh, this episode of Purple Daily is presented with or without pants by TCL. Enjoy more of what you love with TCL. We saw a few people screenshot their uh, Mackie Judd Declan giant heads on their TCL TVs <laughs> watching on the YouTube channel. However you consume us, we appreciate you. However you consume our content. We appreciate you guys here on Purple Daily. Uh, and every week we go through the YouTube comment section and we pull some of the best and some of our favorite and, and, and stuff that we think could be good topics too. And you saw that Tom Pelissero, Kellen Mond clip off the top. So boys, let's start with that discussion. All right. A bunch of people, I, I would say mostly praise of the Kellen Mond draft pick throughout the YouTube comments this week. Uh, Tony Vonasek says Kellen Mond is not a Christian Ponder. So my question to you off this is, can you with confidence tell us that Kellen Mond is not Christian Ponder? Jimbo Fisher system, sort of a rigid delivery and mechanics that need to be ironed out, right? Yeah. So how, how confident are you that Kellen Mond will not be Christian Ponder? I'm going to take his question and I'm going to spin it in a positive way because I think to try and break down Mond, like the transition and stuff is very tough. And I'm sure there are people that could do that exceptionally well. I don't think that I can. But what I would say is this. Kellen Mond is not Christian Ponder because of where Kellen Mond was drafted and the expectations that he will arrive with, which is incredibly important. Now, Christian Ponder was a complete bust. We all know that. But if Christian Ponder had been picked in the round that he should have been and developed correctly, it could have been different. I don't know. I will continue to applaud the fact that I think when it comes to drafting a young developmental quarterback who's not developmental like Nate Stanley. So we're not talking about a practice squad kid. We're not talking about a seventh round pick. But my confidence that this is not a Christian Ponder situation is I think it's being entered to in the right way with far more patience and far more ability to develop said player behind Kirk without, oh my gosh, he has to play it, yeah. unless Kirk gets hurt. So I'm not going to try and break down Mond. What I will break down is I think the process here, to use that term, is far better. So, yeah, I, you know, everything you said is correct. And I would add, too, that one of the main reasons Christian Ponder was such a huge bust and why he, why he failed to even stick around as a backup in the NFL, which is... It's a really short list of first-round quarterbacks that didn't at least have, like, a six, eight, ten-year run as a backup, right? Blaine Gabbert is still in league circles. Mm -hmm. Tampa Bay. Yeah. So even these bust, crappy quarterbacks still hang around as backups. He didn't have the personality and the demeanor. He was a beta personality. And like, if, if you're really going to be a quarterback in the NFL, even as a backup, Matt Castle had kind of an alpha, commanding personality. Didn't have mobility, didn't have a great arm, and so he sort of flamed out as a starting quarterback. But there's a presence that you need as a starting quarterback and even as a backup that Christian Ponder just never came close to. And um, I remember it was actually it was actually Darren Sharper who is going to be in jail for the rest of his life, but he used to be a regular guest on the old Roycey and Mackey radio show on 1500 ESPN every Friday and before he got put in jail for the rest of his life. He was an insightful NFL guest for us on Fridays, right? And we asked him about Christian Ponder one time and like, why do you think this thing's not working out? You know, what do you, from the, cause you're, you're not that far removed from the Vikings locker room. You know, some of those guys. And he said, 
I met Christian Potter one time. And it was, it was a group of like five of us, and we were standing in a circle. And I could tell within five minutes he didn't have the personality needed to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. So that's going to be a big part of it with Kellen Mond. We talk about the skill set, mobility, his mechanics. Can they iron this out? We need to know more about his personality, his leadership, his presence before we can say whether he's going to be the heir apparent to Kirk Cousins going forward. And admittedly, you know, I haven't seen enough. Like, I've seen a couple of interview clips. You know, he's not Mr. Dynamic, but I need to see more of that. And maybe once he gets in, if media can get more access to players and camp, like maybe we'll see some of that play out one way or the other. So sure. what about you, Dex? What, what, Christian Ponder, Kellen Mond, your thoughts? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a fair comparison. Um, if you even look at their college statistics, which, by the way, are pretty damn similar. Christian Ponder's college uh, uh, passer rating at Florida State, 132.1. Kellen Mond, 132. Yards per attempt for Kellen Mond, 7.1. Yards per attempt for Ponder, 7.1. But also, Ponder was extremely conservative. Just 965 career pass attempts in college. Kellen Mond, almost 1,400. He also had 20 more touchdowns. There is a more athletic freak in Kellen Mond than there isn't. Like, Christian Ponder was perfect for a very conservative college offense, right? Like, he is that that prototype. Where Kellen Mond, even though there are some kinks that have to be worked out, I think he is far and away a much better athlete and has an extremely higher ceiling than Christian Ponder does. You know, Ponder was actually a pretty good athlete, too. Like, I mean, he had more mobility than, like, the average quarterback, especially 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And it just, like, he just couldn't put it together mentally. He bailed from the pocket after his first read all the time. So, yeah, I guess we'll I guess we'll see. All right, let's keep going here through the YouTube comment section. <laughs> um, a lot. Of th- thank you guys for some of the, the positive comments here. You guys are – this is from RJ the Great. You guys are definitely one of my favorite sports podcasts – I listened to, um, let's see here, Vikes needed a center and a guard when uh, Bradbury melts from RPM. Yeah, how do you guys feel about Bradbury going into year three? Where's he super- at on the, on the busto meter? Well, I think that <laughs> I think that if they have better guards around him, it's going it's going to help him out. Okay, um, but I do I think that year three is it. Like, I think that this is the, can you play, and I don't mean run block, I mean pass block, can you play or not? Because you can't have a guy uh, being thrown backwards. You can't have a, a guy who can run block but can't pass protect. Like, you, I'm not sold that he's a bust, but I think he's, for a first-round pick, I think he's bordering on that, and 2021 becomes the most important year because if he continues to play like he did in 20, I think you have to take a long, hard look and probably go elsewhere, which is not good because, I mean, a first-round bust for a player at that position looks really, really bad. Um, but I'm not sold that he's that he's a bust. I do think that this will be the year where a decision on his future is definitely made. I think it's important for the Vikings to have an insurance policy behind Garrett Bradbury. Federated Insurance has been helping business owners in the state of Minnesota for over 100 years. Based in Owatonna, they are one of us, and they are sports fans up and down. I've met a lot of the people, uh, a, lot of, a lot of diehard, masochistic Minnesota sports fans there at Federated. Some great people. But Federated has great tools for business owners, risk management, peace of mind. They recently launched MyShield, the online client destination for risk management resources, Find out more about how MyShield can help your business at federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. Garrett Bradbury has made some major strides as a run blocker, but his pass protection is such a disaster still. He needs to take a step forward. I think it helps to have more reliable guys on your left and your right, and so from that perspective, maybe the Vikings can help him more. But at some point, you know, sink or swim, year three, you're either the franchise starting center or you're not. It would be really unfortunate if they whiffed a first-round pick on Bradbury, but um, I, I will withhold judgment. A lot of people say that it oftentimes takes two or three years for especially interior offensive linemen to to find the right weight and the, just everything about it. And center is tough because you're the captain of the offensive line. Um, it's a physical position, but it's also a mental position as well, and it's just it's we talk about left tackle being the most important position. I mean, having a leader and a and someone you can rely on up the middle 
is uh, is maybe equally important. And the Vikings' history and lineage of great centers, and mm-hmm. and all of the pop up years that they've had, um, it's no coincidence that they've had reliable centers along the way. So, all right, um, let's keep going here through the YouTube comment section. Vince James says, "I think the NFL needs to incorporate a salary cap loophole where the starting quarterback." Salary doesn't count toward the cap. MLS has this. It's called the David Beckham rule, and it works for them. Where you can have essentially one superstar player that's just that has nothing to do with your salary cap. How would you guys feel <laughs> if the NFL salary cap included fifty-two players, but you could designate? Well, you, whether it's a court, you could designate a player to be yeah. outside your salary cap. Doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of the cap itself, which is to penal yeah. or not penalize you, but? It causes you to be held accountable for all of your players. Yeah. So uh, let me tell you this: if this no, happened, I don't I, like I, this. I get that Vince is saying this from the perspective of like, oh, then the Vikings could get out from underneath Kirk's yeah, contract. Absolutely. In the, in the long run, this type of rule would hurt a team like the Vikings, who don't bring in as much revenue as some of the bigger market teams. I mean, the Vikings profit, but the Giants and the Cowboys, like these bigger market teams, profit more, and so they'd be able to go and get. When Kellen Mond is your starting quarterback and then he becomes a free agent, Dallas would be able to pay him more than you could in terms of like available uh, sure. resources coming in. But I mean, the it'd whole be like pur- baseball. But the whole purpose of the cap, right, is to is to hold the front office accountable for all players, including stars. Yeah. So I I get his point, and as a Viking fan right now, it would be great. But I think it would defeat the entire purpose of why they do it. So no, I would not do that. Dex, what about you? Are you? you no, in, that's in, just. No. I don't really understand the point. I'm, I'm not going to ex- try to ex- ex- put it in the shoes of like, oh, but soccer does this because uh, I I don't know how that works in EPL and other. Royce soccer thinks leagues. you're a big soccer yeah, he, fan. Well, Royce, so. Royce, Royce thinks I am don't Jonathan like, Harrison. I, I, don't he, you like soccer, yeah, Declan? Yeah, no, Royce thinks soccer. you like soccer. Yes, he turns yes. to him every Unchained show and asks no. him a question about soccer and. <laughs> Declan always puts his headphones on. He's like, I don't Pat, like I, soccer. I really don't know, Pat. I Does don't Royce really know that question. you and Jonathan Harrison aren't the same person? Or is he and like, to don't look alike. I was going to say. Don't really <laughs> sound alike. Like, I could understand <laughs> no, maybe. you don't. Because people used to say, listen, like, when when I'd be on with Wetmore, people were like, I couldn't tell the difference between you and Wetmore's voice. Yeah, you guys both have sort of like similarly pitched voices. Yeah. And but, outlandish, but, nerdy takes on life. Exactly. Exactly. But no, I'm not <laughs> Jonathan Harrison. I am not. I am Declan. Um, <laughs> man, you guys, this is some... Some positivity flowing into the YouTube comment sections. Myron K says, love your show and commentary. You are spot on on your assessments and what the team should do to make themselves better. Keep up the good work. We need this validation sometimes. You Damn know, it. Very yep. highly we're, insecure people. We're start small. Very insecure. Yep. Uh, John G, John Galt says, no excuses. We did the no excuses episode yesterday. Sure. A couple of draft picks and the putrid offensive line is fixed. I don't think so. The middle of last year's offensive line was so weak and unreliable as a wet paper bag. <laughs> then the Vikings let it let a competent left tackle go and drafted a left tackle twenty third and a guard late in the third. Maybe they'll work out as pass protectors. Maybe, uh, but even if they do, the center and the uh, the guard play uh, the centers on roller skates, et cetera, et cetera. So he's not convinced that they've all of a sudden flipped the switch and fixed the offensive line. Let me be very clear: if for any reason. Dakota Dozier starts on opening day, everyone's fired, okay? Yep. Everyone, like everyone. The janitor. I don't know who you are. I don't know your name, but you're fired. You're fired. Um, you're fired. You drafted a left tackle who I think is good. Like, he's a twenty. He's a, he's a first-round draft pick. I think I, and the scouting reports are very favorable on uh, Christian Derrissaw, which, okay, the guard position, but Cleveland, once he started to play guard, was actually, I mean, I'm not t- saying that he was a Pro Bowl player, but he was certainly serviceable. Like, and here, but here's the important thing. If your idea of, well, the no excuses tag means that you have a Pro Bowl player at every position, that ain't happening. There is a salary cap, okay? So, like, we're talking about the the real world here, which is you drafted a new guard, You've got a, a, a second-round pick who's at guard. You've got a first-round pick at left tackle. You've got skill position guys who are really good. Your defense is remade. Like, in this league, that's as far as you can go to say there are no excuses. 
Sorry, I dropped my computer because oh, Declan I, just oh, Declan just sent some jarring breaking news here. Yeah, I was about to say, it. I didn't know it was that shocking. I thought you threw your Sorry, laptop out the window. I just spat. You got so I, mad about my yeah, take. Yes, you did. All right, so uh, we'll get back to comments from YouTube in a second here. But breaking Wilf news, breaking Wilf news. The This is from Sportico. The Wilf family, owners of the Minnesota Vikings, are nearing an agreement to purchase MLS's Orlando City Soccer Club. Which How do you feel about the Wilfs cheating on Minnesota sports well, hold fans on a second. with an Orlando MLS team? Well, to be clear, they, they had a, a stake that I guess they're going to have to divest themselves in of the Nashville team mm. that I think started playing, right? Yeah, yes. I, I'm pretty yes. sure. So, and and here's why I have no problem with the dalliance that's going on in Florida between the Wilfs and, and Orlando City SC. How pretentious is that? The Wolves were, along with McGuire, were, I believe, the finalists to have an expansion or a MLS team in this town. And I believe the goal was to, I think the goal was to have it play short term in U.S. Bank Stadium. But they were very involved there. And they wanted in on soccer. They kind of got they're, frozen out. Yeah, right. But what I'm saying is, so they were forced to cheat. And it started in Nashville, and now it's going full bore to Orlando. But I have no problem if that's their goal. Then more power to them. Yeah, I, I think it would have been fun. I, I, now, if if the A Rod Mark Lowry purchase of the Timberwolves goes through, that will also be fun for many reasons. But I thought it would be fun if the Wolves owned the Timberwolves because they they I are really good professional sports owners. Like, yep, you know they haven't brought a championship here, but sustainable success, mostly stable, right? Like, um, all right, back to the YouTube comment section here. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, some more lavish praise from Rebel Viking 912 I got to admit, when I first started watching you guys, I thought you guys were a bunch of knuckleheads. My apologies. You guys have grown on me and not like a wart. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Slightly That's backhanded nice. compliment. Um, and then Steve Northenskold wants to know, Judd, do you have any new Steely Dan takes today? Did I have one? I, think you've brought up, I feel like you've brought up Steely Dan. I'm not a Dan, fan. So. Let's say, I didn't, no, I didn't, I'm not a fan. You were ripping Steely Dan. Dan. You were ripping Steely Dan. I'm not a big oh, fan of Steely, ripping. Okay. Steely Dan. Uh, my own, the only Steely Dan song I really like is Dirty Work, which I think is be- from before a bunch of the band joined. That's the only one. That's a great song. But I don't know it sounds why you different. have a problem with Steely, Steely Dan. Steely Dan is, I, you know what? I'm not a huge fan of that FM radio 70s vibe that was like let's play really long songs and stuff yeah. that that ain't me okay. that's uh, not me sorry g gurness says judd looks more relaxed since the draft i would give 20% uh <laughs> to the Vi- to the vikings finally fixing their o line and 80% to them finding a potential quarterback <laughs> of the future and more importantly a way out of the kirk cousins cat misery in 2022 is that an accurate pie chart of your relaxation since the draft? Do you feel more relaxed since the draft? Not really, no. I'm stressed about the twins. I mean, it's, it's not good. <laughs> like, there's always something to worry about here. That That's the problem. It's like you got children, and it's like you finally got the one kid off the drugs, and now the now the kid, now the second kid's drinking. I feel so, very relaxed. I mean, I'm not concerned about the twins because their relaxed, season's over. Like, this twin season's over, and now we get to focus exclusively no. on the teams that matter. It's time for changes at Target Field. Those will happen at some point. We can come I mean, in. Yeah, but we get. But, now. but we got to be on top of them. All right. Uh, Sizzleman, Sizzleman's a great handle on YouTube. Here says, "My Vikings motto: Hope for the best, beware of the curse, expect the worst." <laughs> yeah, it's very fair. Yeah, I think that's kind of a like as Vikings fans for fair. years. It's you're sort of guarded against the bad, terrible things mm-hmm. that could happen. Um, so yeah, all right. Great trip through the YouTube comment section. Some great questions, some good themes, and some great lavish praise for your favorite three Vikings entertainers here. We'll Knuckle always heads. take we'll always take the validation, and uh, it'll help it'll help keep it. It's like fuel for us week by week. We just need that positive yeah. reinforcement to keep going. So, all right, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Don't forget Declan on Sunday nights with uh, Vikings Vent Line, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, we're uh, we're working on a couple guests here too. We're We've been in contact with Chris Sims people just to get a breakdown there. And um, so we'll have some guests on the horizon for you here on Purple Day. Thanks for hanging out with us. Daily Vikings Entertainment, Mackie Judd, Declan. We'll see you next time.